dumb. <sighs> that was so cool. Welcome back to another episode of Caleb Does Dumb Things in order to get what he hopes is amazing photos. I just spent uh, three hours getting new tires and brakes and an alignment done on my truck. Uh, the tires were bald, it was terrible. I need to get it fixed, but the whole plan is to get this boat out and go up to a lake. I'm actually going to an island. Today we're doing wildlife photography and I'm chasing bighorn sheep. From what I understand, these animals are pretty patient with people and I think I know where to find them. So I'm gonna go up there and chase them around. Gotta get this out to do it. The weather's turning on me really quick. It doesn't look like it here, but it is. There's, this is a bad decision, but here we go. Let's hook it up. While you watch the montage of me driving to the location, I'll give you some more context on the location and the trip. This location was shared to me by a former coworker and a very good friend, Jesse Hermanson. Now, Jesse is a wildlife photographer with tremendous skill, far more skill than I have or probably ever will. You should check out his stuff. There's a link in the description. But Jesse had told me that this island has very large bighorn sheep, as well as wild horses and even giant deer. I've been there once before, but in much different conditions. So now I'm going back with the purpose of finding these bighorn sheep. And unfortunately, Jesse couldn't make it with me, but I had it set in my heart that I was going to make it there. So we'll go back to the video and I'll tell you more about it in real time. After no small effort, I'm on the lake. We're moving. That's where we're going. Going out there to the island. The lake's not too rough right now. This boat can handle some pretty rough water. But I don't know what it's going to turn into, but we're going to give it a shot. Let's, uh, let's get some stuff organized and get going. Okay, so this boat ride doesn't look that bad when I watch the video, but let me tell you, it was a little hair raising, and at one point, straight terrifying. The waves got rougher and rougher as I got out into the lake, and they actually started blowing over the bow of the boat. Now, I have handled this boat in some pretty rough water before, I know what I'm doing, I have some experience. But it was still a little bit unpleasant because it was beating up the boat, and I didn't have much time to get there, and I was pushing it a little bit too fast. What was terrifying was as I was going, there were giant trees floating in the water, entirely submerged trees, they call them deadheads, in the water that could at any point rake the motor off the boat and throw me out. I didn't know that because of the waves until I passed one at way too fast of a speed. At that point I had to throttle down and I had to maneuver between all the floating trees and I, let's just say I was very lucky to get there safely. It was a bad choice. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Now. Importantly, I am wearing my life vest and I am wearing the kill switch. Do not go out and do these things without learning boating safety. Take it from me, things can go badly very quickly out there. Be safe, follow the laws, and keep your head about you. Okay, I made it to the island. I don't know if you can see on that boat ride trip, but I got absolutely soaked. Spray coming over the front of the boat, the waves were a lot more nasty than I thought. There are a lot of floating timber out there, a lot of floating trees. The rivers have been flooding. You probably saw what happened in Yellowstone. What's happening up here as well. And so the lake's super high. I'm not going to lie, I am not looking forward to doing that in the dark. In fact, I don't think I want to do it in the dark. Not safe. So I don't have much time. This might have been a waste. But first thing I saw when I got here was a mama deer and her baby. A little fawn walking around. It's not what I came here to shoot, so I'm going to keep on going. But Maybe we'll get lucky. So I've got my backpack loaded down with my normal tripod, but this time I have a gimbal head on it. I've got my Nikon 500PF, 500 millimeter lens in my bag. I need to get it out and on my camera as soon as possible so I'm ready for an animal when they come out. But also notice I'm wearing drab colors. It's not camouflage, but it's drab colors. I understand these sheep are pretty used to people, but I also don't want to alert them, so, you know, the more low-key you are, the better. The appropriate ways and inappropriate ways to approach animals. First, you don't want to disturb them. Second, you want to get close enough you can get photos. So, I don't know how much of that I'm going to be able to teach and show on this, because when I, if I find them, I won't be able to do much talking, but I'll do what I can. But hopefully I can capture some of these moments for you, if they happen. All right, at this point in the trip, I was looking for the sheep as soon as possible. Now I knew where I wanted to start. 
and just like everywhere else in Montana, it seems like there's an 800 foot climb to get wherever you want to go for landscape or wildlife photography. That's about what I had to do here. I didn't have much time and there wasn't much light. Despite what it looks like in this video, it was getting dark quickly and the clouds really did dim the sky. So that gives you some context of what I'm doing, why I was moving so quickly, and why I made some of the mistakes you're going to see me make up here. So I spotted a sheep finally. This is where I am. I spotted a sheep way up there. Let's see if I can even kind of zoom in way up there. There's almost a 0% chance of me making it to that location in the next hour, let alone to get there and get back before dark. I'm hoping I can find some closer. Couldn't see if it was a ram. Honestly, I just saw a silhouette thing climbing up a sheer cliff over there, which is another obstacle. Just Hopping up the cliff like nothing happened, so let it up against the sky. The only thing to be is a sheep. We keep looking. I regret not taking my own advice and getting my camera ready. I just came around this trail corner, and there's a great big mule deer buck standing here. He's still got the velvet on his antlers. It's only June. He stood there long enough for me to get my camera out, get the lens on, and take a couple photos, but. He was already getting a little uncomfortable and heading away. I'm not going to chase him. Hopefully he'll just show back up. I'm going to leave him alone. But now I'm going to keep my camera out on my camera strap and be ready. I don't like carrying it around like that, but I don't want to miss another opportunity like that. He was beautiful. Okay, so that was super cool. That big buck did pop back out on the trail. And all I had to do was take a couple steps off the trail to get a nice clean view of him. He seemed very chill with me there, very comfortable. Looked at me for a second and then went back to grazing. So I was uh, lucky enough to get a few shots of him. He did walk off. He probably gave me, I don't know, a minute, a minute and a half of time with him. That's long enough. Uh, then he wanted his own time, so I let him go. I am now on my way up this ridge to try to glass for sheep. I'm running out of daylight and I can hear the wind in the trees just picking up. It's not good for my boat ride back. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm scared about it. I'm, I'm scared of that boat ride back in the dark with those big trees floating out there. I'm gonna have to go very slow and be very cautious. But look at it out here. Just beautiful everywhere. Maybe there'll be some landscape shots up there too. It's not what I came here for. Came here for, for the wildlife, but we'll see what we can find. I'm happy either way. That was so cool. While I hike up this hill, I can talk about my gear, my settings just a little bit. So I'm out here with my Nikon Z7 II, and I have the 500 PF on there. That stands for phased Fresnel lens. Looks like Fresnel, but it's a Fresnel lens. It's a three and a half pounds, basically, or three and a quarter pounds, but it has 500 millimeter reach and it goes to aperture f5.6 so not quite a 600 f4 but so much lighter i can just carry it around i can hand hold it it's got image stabilization i turned the shutter speed up to just over 500 i think i was at 640th of a second and i used manual settings with auto iso so i was able to choose my shutter speed and make sure that my aperture was down at 5.6 so i can kind of separate him from the background. The manual ISO makes sure I get my exposure right still. So I would rather get the exact scene that I want, the right aperture so I get the depth of field that I want, and the shutter speed so I can make sure it's not a blurry photo, and allow the photo to be a little grainier, let the camera decide 
the ISO for me. Now, I always keep my eye on it. Now, I'm shooting around ISO 2000. Definitely not my forte. I'm a landscape photographer first and foremost, and I'm used to ISO 64. It's beautiful. There's zero noise in it. ISO 2000. Looks like I shot it with a potato cam to me. And it drives me nuts. Whew, I'm going to lose my breath going up this. But it allows me to get the shot, and that's the most important thing. So while I catch my breath here, another thing is this Nikon P or 500 millimeter PF is designed for F mount lenses, not these Z mount lenses. This is a Z mount camera. Obviously it's just mirrorless. So I'm using this adapter. I'm not a big fan of that. It adds some length to the lens. It's a hassle to put on. And honestly, I think it slows things down a little bit. It's not as fast. Like if I put this on the D850, this lens autofocus is incredible, but it's not as good on this Z7 II. I don't know if that's because the autofocus isn't as good as the D850, because, you know, what is? But I do know that it's a little bit slower, or at least in my mind it is. That's an okay, that's an okay thing, because I don't have another telephoto lens like this, another prime for the Z series. Now, if they come out with a Z mount 600 millimeter lens like this, like a PF style 600 millimeter Z lens, I'm going to go broke over that because well, everybody is, everybody's going to want that. So I'm keeping my eyes open, but this works really well for now. One of the tricks with it though, if you can see there, my uh, vibration reduction, the VR mode is set to sport. Now that's because I have noticed that I miss my focus point a lot. If I'm using a single point focus, it lags. Like It will show me I'm focused over here, but for some reason the actual focus spot will be over there whenever I shoot the photo. It's not off by much, but it's enough to miss the eye of, a, of an animal or the precise focus point that you want. I've noticed that with the sport mode, the image stabilization isn't as good. It's not as stable, but I can at least hit my exact focus point. So just a tip with these. Um, if you're trying them with a Z-series lens, try out the sport mode if you're trying to handhold and you seem to be missing, not not getting blurry photos, but you're missing the focus point. Give that a shot because I almost thought this lens was junk on this camera for a while until I tried that out and now it's beautiful. Back on the trail. be it for the day unfortunately it was a lot shorter trip than I expected I should have gotten started so much earlier in the day fantastic out here it's beautiful but it's not as bright as it looks in my video right now on this phone it's actually getting pretty dark I was using my camera as a spotting scope 500 millimeters is basically a 10x equivalent binocular of sorts and I was using that to scan these mountains over here and look for the rams and well, the one that I saw earlier is way over there still. I'm, I'm nowhere close to it. That was a long way off, long, long way off. I can't believe I spotted it. I just started filming my outro saying that I failed on the day and I couldn't find the sheep. And I found them right over here. I say right over there. It's, well, it's, shoot, it's, it's a long way away, but they're right there. And there's some big rams and they're big rams. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get there and get a shot. It's too dark, but I can't see them and, and not try. So I'm, I'm going for it, I'm going for it.
That was nothing short of amazing. I'm pretty far from them now, but I found the rams. I found them. And it's way too dark, way too dark. The photos are horrible. They're, they're way too grainy. I just shot everything at ISO 50 or 5,000 and above, I bet. But I found them and that's what counts because now I know where to find them again, or at least I have a starting point. But it's getting dark. It looks light in the camera, but it's, it's getting dark. I need to get back. I, and I gotta do that boat ride. That boat ride's scaring the snot out of me right now. I'm thinking about doing that in the dark with all those trees floating out there. So, whew, that was cool. That was so cool. Uh, I'm so dumb though. <laughs> now I'm gonna be walking back in the dark on this island that I don't know that well to get to a boat to traverse a lake that I don't know that well during flood stages where there's trees floating around. Uh, For some reason, it's dumb things like this that get me excited. Uh, oh, it was so cool. Uh, lightning strikes. That's not good. I gotta go boating. I gotta get back before dark. Gotta do my best. I don't like it. I cannot believe how bright it looks in this camera view right here. I'm on my phone filming this and it looks like bright daylight. It's almost dark. It's 920 sunsets at 940. We're in the mountains and it's overcast. So I'm sure this looks like potato vision, but either way about it, I made it back to my boat. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna race to the, the as fast as I can safely, get back to the boat ramp, get this thing on the trailer because I don't wanna do this in the dark, so. I'll reconvene when I make it safe. Okay, so this boat ride back wasn't as bad as I had built it up in my mind. It was lighter out on the water than what I thought since I was out of the trees and I wasn't behind the island anymore, and the waves had died down a little bit. Now there's still plenty of floating trees out there and it was getting dark quickly, so it did take some careful maneuvering and a lot of very close attention being paid. Again, I was wearing my life vest, I was wearing a kill switch, but I would not recommend this type of trip for anybody. If you see these dangerous type of conditions, do not go out on the water, and definitely don't do this if you don't have experience in a boat. Take somebody with you that knows what they're doing, knows how to handle the boat, and has done it before. So I obviously made it home, I'm safe, I'm changed. I feel lucky to have made it home, but I'm gonna wrap this video up with a few things that I think I did right and a few things I did wrong. And trust me, I did a whole lot wrong in this video. Um, I've broken this down into basically three main points. And the first one is timing. Timing is everything, and especially with wildlife photography. One, you can't shoot photos of animals if they're not there. So you have to be at the right place at the right time and really great photography comes down to great lighting. A questionable photo with great lighting can be made into a decent photo. A great photo with great lighting can be world-class, but a questionable photo without the right lighting is really a throwaway image, and that's a lot of what happened here, is I didn't end up in the right place at the right time because I didn't give myself enough time to get there. Now, in my case, I got lucky and I found the animals. I found that mule deer buck and I found a whole bunch of bighorn sheep. Unfortunately, I found them at last light. And because of the low lighting, it means that with this lens setup that I was using, I could only shoot at f8 and that gave me a pretty high ISO. So my sheep photos didn't come out the way that I wanted. Make sure you plan your trip so that good lighting can happen and make sure you give yourself the chance and then try to get there whenever the animals are going to be in the right location for a good photo at the right light. Now, I'd give you better tips on how to do that, but every scenario is a little different. I got kind of lucky, kind of not lucky here. Second thing, approaching the animals. So I did a terrible job of this today, but also I tried to save it, and I'll explain what I mean. So first thing, I wasn't carrying my camera out on my strap when I first got there, and I actually came across that mule deer buck while he was essentially looking right at me, and I didn't have enough time to get the photo because the camera was in my backpack. That was a mistake. 
So what I should have done was have had that camera out so when I saw him, I could have taken the photo. Now what I did to save that, something I think I did good, is knowing how to approach the animal. Once I recognized that mule deer buck was there and paying attention to me, I wasn't being threatened by the animal and the animal didn't look immediately threatened by me. He was aware of me, but he wasn't startled. So instead of making direct eye contact with that animal and staring straight into his soul, what I did was I didn't stop at all. I kind of redirected my path to quarter past him. So trying to go at a 45 degree angle towards the animal, but not directly at them and minded my own business. I looked at my feet, I looked at the trees, I acted like I was just minding my own business, just as I was as I was walking up. So the deer was at least somewhat okay with me approaching him while I was just walking nonchalantly. So I continued to walk nonchalantly, but with a purpose. I walked until I was behind a bit of brush, I got my camera out, I got it all ready, and he was nice enough to let me get a couple photos off. Now, again, if I would have had my camera out while I was doing that 45 degree strafing move next to the animal, trying not to alert them and approach them too closely and rapidly, I could have maybe popped off a couple extra shots. Now, uh, another scenario is whenever I saw the bighorn sheep. I saw them, they were a long way away. I had minutes of light left and I had to get there right now. So I basically had to charge straight at them, but not quite straight at them. Just again, as though you were trying to picture a hunter's mindset. You want to be where the animals are gonna be when you get there. And I had probably half a mile to cross through a big valley. It was gonna take me some time and I was marching as fast as I could. So what I tried to do is plan on where the animals were and see where they were going to be, and I tried to appear again in front of them ahead of where they're gonna be so I could be there when the animals arrived. I messed up, and they were there before I was there. Now, in this case, again, the animals weren't terribly alerted by me. The second that I noticed that I screwed up and I saw them, I redirected my path about a 45 degree angle to the right. I did not change my pace, and I made sure the animals were not reacting negatively to me. If they started to act negatively and negatively, I would have turned farther away to hopefully let them calm down, because again, I don't want to make the animals panic. In this case, they seemed to be okay with me. I went behind some brush again, I knelt down, and I got out a tripod and he saw me shooting some photos. Now, these animals were not threatening animals. If you come around a corner and there's a bear standing there, don't try to act like you're going to just act non-threateningly non -threateningly and get closer to them react in a way that's appropriate for the animals that you're around. These animals were not going to hurt me and I did not cause any undue stress to them by judging their reactions at least. So, And the third thing in this case is having the right gear. Now I won't say that this camera setup is the absolute perfect setup for what I was doing. This Z7 II, Nikon Z7 II, is a good camera. I love it for landscapes and it's okay for wildlife. It does really well for mammals like I was shooting today. This 500 PF on it is a fantastic lens. Now it only goes down to aperture 5.6 and I put the 1.4 X teleconverter on there and I can only get down to aperture F8. That really limited me, but in this case it was the right decision to make for me for these photos because I could fill the full frame. When I say fill the full frame, I mean your sensor is only so big, and if you can put what you want in that image as large on that sensor as possible and you don't have to crop afterwards, you're going to get the best quality photo out of that. In my case, the sheep and the mule deer just so happened to be at the right distance where with this teleconverter, I didn't have to crop my images hardly at all. If the animals had been any closer to me, what I would have preferred to have done was remove the teleconverter and only shoot with the, the lens itself. I could have lowered my aperture, brought in more light, and also removed any extra glass in there so that I didn't have any more distortion or other image degradation. So probably for this shoot, what would have been ideal is a 600 millimeter f4, let's be honest. That would have been amazing. One of the FL Nikon lenses, $12,000 monster lenses. But in fact, it's kind of good that I didn't have that. That's a big lens to carry around. It's a little bit more threatening when you're moving with it towards an animal and is more cumbersome, heavy, and I probably would have had to be a little bit more careful with it because while I can't afford to break this, I really can't afford to break a $12,000 lens. So in my case, I had the perfect gear for doing this particular shoot. So in summary, those are my three takeaways. Timing and light. Make sure that you show up at the right time with good light to get good photos. There's nothing else I can say about that other than good photos need good light. 
Approaching the animals. When you approach an animal, make sure that you judge their movements and judge their awareness of you. And if they are aware of you and comfortable with you being there, approach them in a way that's non-threatening so you can take the photos and don't just charge right into them because then you're just gonna get alerted animals and you're gonna put stress on that animal. And the third thing, make sure you bring the right gear. Don't show up to a wildlife photo shoot with your wide angle lens. Your 15 to 30 millimeter lens is gonna make a sheep or a deer look this big in your frame. Simple logic on all those things, but they're good reminders and you can see that even after you've done this for a while, you can still mess it up sometimes. But maybe this will show you how to prevent that and maybe deal with it whenever you do mess up. Thanks for coming along with me. I hope to have some more videos soon. I'll see you next time.